Welcome back to Bob's Magic Emporium. It's time for another all new Magician 101, the show for all magicians. Make sure to post your questions down below for next week and I'll give them an answer. And also watch the brand new show, Trick Questions, starting uh, tomorrow where I'll be answering your questions about Chad Long's Flash. And if you want to ask a question about Flash, the trick with the two USB drives, uh, find the video that I posted a couple days ago saying a brand new show and you can ask your questions on that video. All right, so the first question this week, my post your questions down below for next week, comes from Future Magic 101 And he says, when you have your chat with Chris, can you ask him if there will be any more Mad Sponges sets? Because I really want one. Smiley face. And what do you think you will be getting from the shopping spree? Uh, smiley face with sunglasses. You just said smiley face again. Uh, yes, I did. <laughs> I think you people put that stuff in the chat just to make me say it. Uh, all right, but anyways. Yes, I will ask if there's going to be any more Mad Sponges sets. I don't know what I'm going to get from the shopping spree because Chris is going to help you pick out tricks to go in your routine. So we'll see what happens with that. So we'll see what he gets. And uh, I don't know what when I'm going to have the shopping spree. Hey, I'm going to message Chris Ballinger today and I'll um, ask him what it's going to be. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I don't know if I'm going to be able to uh, when it is. So we'll see if he responds back to me today after I message him. Mr. Tadpole 221 says, great job. I'm excited to see your street show. That was me, Smiley Face. And I posted that street magic video on Monday. So if you want to see me do my entire street magic show, you should definitely check out Magical Mondays that was posted two days ago. Mr. Tadpole says, you should check out some magic apps that I just bought. They're called Magic Trick Number 1. There's a number 2 and a number 3. Could you do a review of them and how to use them in a routine? Thanks again. Keep up the good work. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I have a deck of cards right here, a normal deck of cards. I'm going to give these cards a little bit of a cut that way. And uh, normally what would happen is the spectator would just go ahead and name any card that they want. But since the spectator here, we're going to say that they name, I'm just going to pull a card out here. We'll go Queen of Spades. All right, so let's say they say the Queen of Spades, but they could literally say any card that they want. And I have a prediction here on my phone. Right here is the prediction. Watch, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and rub my screen. Watch, I'm going to rub the screen, and if I rub it, I, a prediction starts to reveal itself. Let me go ahead and rub that a little bit more, and notice that the prediction underneath this black stuff is the queen of spades. Your card. All right, now not very impressive, I know, because there's no spectator here to actually name a card, but they can name a card, and it's really cool. So, that's magic trick number one. Uh, there's also a number two and a number three, like Mr. Tadpole said. Number two is a tic-tac-toe thing, where you are always going to win against the spectator. Um, and there's another one where it's like a book test. What it is, is uh, they bring up their iPhone calculator, and they do a couple um, math problems in their phone, and that gives you a page number in a book, and you open it up, and then there's the first word on the page is your prediction, and it's right. Um, I, those two wouldn't fit in my show. I do a lot of card tricks for my, like, close-up shows, and I use some iPhone magic, too, in my, um, yes, yeah, so a Wizard of Oz phone case. I do some iPhone magic, so, um, it would fit in my show. So, first, I want to do a review of it. Um, there's one thing I don't like about the trick. It's, um, it, it you, they can, they can't name any card, even though that I lied and said they could. They can't name any card, but there's a way to get out of it. Uh, but they can, they do have a free choice of certain cards, so it's not like it's they're forcing one card on them. You, they can name a couple different cards, but they can't name all 52 because the app doesn't do that. But there's also the way you get into having it set up is not a way that I would have liked. There's a way that you can get the cards selected on your iPhone that would be better. That they don't they don't have it set up in a certain way, and I don't want to give away. Uh, how they should set it up, but um, it's a it's an acronym. They should have set it up like an acronym. I'm, I'm only going to say that. I can't go into any more, but they didn't. Um, so I can't really go into too much more about that. But it's a great trick. I've done it for some of my coworkers because one of my coworkers was having a birthday last week or this week, and because I, I, I wasn't working with her the rest of the week, so she's like, I'm having a birthday. I gotta have a birthday magic trick. So I pulled that one out because I just downloaded it like that day. And uh, I did it for her, and she was like, what? She, she loved it. She thought it was cool. So it does get good reaction, but from a magic standpoint, from the magician standpoint, um, you, can't, you have to set the uh, phone up to, to do the prediction, 
and they don't do it in a way that I would have liked for them to do it. Uh, there's a certain way they could have done it, and I wish they would have done it that way. Another thing is, the cool thing is, once you set the phone up, with their card, they can actually rub the phone and they can scratch the phone themselves. They can get rid of the black stuff. So that's really cool. Uh, they can do it, uh, which is neat. You just have to do one move and then they can uh, do it. So it's really, really cool. So it is a great trick, but it does have some flaws. So if it looks like something you would use in your show, then download it. The other two, the book test and the tic-tac-toe one, I would never use. So I didn't download it, so I can't give you my review on that. But it's, but the card one's not bad. It's not bad. You just got to remember certain things to have the trick work. But it's not a bad trick. All right. The Magician PR says, uh, Do you know where I can buy magic cases for my show that is not on any websites? All right. Yes, I can tell you where to buy some magic cases. I'm going to go grab one over here. Normally, I have this stuff set up. Normally, I have it like sitting next to me. But I'm going to show you a really cool magic case that I got. It's this one. It's a little box, and uh, it has a handle on it. It's got locks, and it has kind of stickers from all over the world on it. I'll show you the inside of it, too. And it has a nice inside design. I keep a couple tricks in there. Notice, but um, it's nice. They come in different sizes. There's a small one, a medium one, and a big one. I got these from Michaels. Uh, I got two of them from Michaels because they were half off, and they were and they're really nice. There's different colors and styles, so it's really nice. The only bad thing about it though is the strap on mine broke, so they're not very good quality. So you don't want to use it for like a street show where you're going to be carrying this around a lot. But if you're doing a stage show, this really works nicely. Because you can carry a couple props in there, have it sit as like a prop bin or something like that. There's some other good ones too. Uh, one of these, I'll get it out. I'll bring it over here. Let me go. Let me grab it here. This is a really nice case. This is a really nice one here. I did this one in my magic collection. You might probably you probably will remember this one. This is a nice one. It's it's got a nice inside. It's Nice. I use this one for when I do my street show. Uh, not this one. I have a smaller uh, tan one over there. But I use this. It's nice. It looks like you travel the world. It's nice. My uh, lock came off of this one because I've had this for like seven or eight years. I got this when I like first started Magic. I got this at Big Lots, actually. Uh, so you can get that. There's a lot of really nice style close-up cases you can get from certain places like... Um, Walmart and Target have some really nice close-up cases. Uh, they're little makeup cosmetic cases, but they're really, really nice. So, uh, you know, you can get those from like Walmart or Target. So you just check around different stores because the, the, great, the great thing about a magic case is you don't have to use anything. Like you can use anything. You can use a doctor bag. You can use uh, cases like those. You could use um, little storage containers, whatever you want. It's really how your magic character is going to fit. You know, I kind of talk about when I have the cases, I say, oh, you guys, usually I point it out during my show. So you like my case? Yeah, I've been all over the world performing my magic. I go into a whole story about that. So that's, you know, those are really nice. So just just take a peek around at like Michael's, Big Lots, Target, Walmart. You know, uh, you can find stuff to use for magic cases in the most unique places. So definitely... Uh, just as you're walking through stores, see if you see any cases or or storage containers that you think, that might work for my magic. All right. He also wants to know, and in the Vanishing Bandana trick, can you make it in different languages? I checked online for you, and I did not find any in different languages. What you can do, though, is if, if English is not your language, if you speak it like as a second language or you know another language and you perform for like, um, like one of the examples is some magicians perform for Spanish people and they do do, um, uh, people, I'm sorry, people who speak Spanish and, um, you know, and they perform people who speak Spanish and they can actually do a fluent show in Spanish. I've seen a magician, I know of a magician online who does a Spanish show. What you can do is if you speak English or you can get somebody to translate for you, you can make your own CD by using uh, like a uh, microphone and a recording software. You can record your own CD and throw it on a CD. So you can definitely do that, make your own. If you have somebody translate the English version for you, and then you can put it on a CD and maybe make it in a different language. But there's no, you can't actually go to like any magic websites and buy a uh, Spanish version or a French version or a Chinese version. You can't do that. 
It just won't, it won't, people don't make that. Which is weird because, you know, there are magicians in other parts of the world, so, and it's a, and it's a, it's a classic trick, too, the Vanishing Bandana, so, I don't know why they don't make it in other languages, but they really should, though. And there's probably other magic websites out there that, there are some that I know of, or that I used to know of, I think the one went out of business, that do customizable CDs. And they do, like, it used, the one, the one was called the Magic Enhancer, but the guy went out of business, I think. I think he went out of business. And he used to do customizable CDs with, like, your magic name or whatever. And he might have been able to do, like, a Spanish version or a French version. But I don't know of anybody who actually does different language vanishing bandanas. Couldn't find any of them. And the Magician PR also wants to know, can you show me your method for, for pitching tips? All right. Great. I love it. First thing I usually do for pitching tips is I use this hat. And if you saw my street magic video, I do, I, this is the hat that I use. I put it in front of my, uh, in front of my performing zone. Normally I'll put it right inside of my performing ring. I'll make a ring out of like, um, um, rope. I'll make a ring out of rope, like a little half circle or a ring. And I'll put my hat in front of there. And I like to use this hat because it's a lot different. People know that it's a tip receptacle. Uh, first thing I'll do is I'll take a couple dollars and throw a couple, they call it stock money in the hat. So that when people, because if people see a hat sitting on the ground and you're, and they see the word magic, like if you have a sign next to you that says magic show, they may think, oh, I can't touch this because it might be a magic prop. That way, if you put a couple dollars in the hat, they can see there's money already in there. So that way they get the gist of, oh, this guy wants money. That's the first thing. The second thing is you want to reference your tip receptacle I love the word receptacle. Reference your tip receptacle throughout the show. So you want to just make mention that, hey, you know, my. Uh, you, if you want to throw money in the hat, you're more than welcome to. Don't be shy to do it. Um, just throw some, uh, you just could say, you know, if, you, if you're enjoying the show so far, take out your wallet and throw it in the hat. Just always reference the, the, the hat throughout the show. That's the best thing to do. Because that way, when it comes time at the end of your show to actually pitch for tips, when you actually pass the hat around, it's not going to be foreign. You've been referencing it throughout the entire show, and they're going to be like, okay, I'm used to the idea that this guy is going to want money. And that way, if people don't want to stick around because they're just like, yo, this guy just wants money, then they're going to leave the first time you mention hat and money. So it's a good way to weave out people who aren't going to give you tips either. So you want to reference the hat, not every second throughout the show, but normally what I'll do is like two or three times throughout the show, I'll reference my hat and I'll say, hey, you know, if you like in the show so far, I do accept tips. You know, just, and and usually I, I'm not blatant about it, but I'm sort of blatant. So I'm not usually blatant. If you don't know what that word means, that's like, I'm not direct. But sometimes I am. So like normally I'll kind of like reference the hat, but I won't just be like, hey, throw money in the hat. I'll usually say, you know, if you're liking the show, I do accept tips, just to let you know, because nobody pays me to be out here. And that's the big line to get tips, is you want to make sure you tell people, nobody pays me to be out here. So it's just the contributions of you kind people. Now, once you're finished with your entire show, the best way to pitch for tips is to end with a trick where you can hold the hat at the end. A couple great tricks is Chris Ballinger's Fraid Not. That's a great one because Chris Ballinger talks about at the end of the DVD, he says, have your spectators pull the ropes out of your hands and put them in the hat as you hold the hat. And that way you're in perfect position to pass the hat. Uh, the trick I do for my closing, if you saw my Street Magic show, is um, my grandfather's favorite card trick. At the end, I'll say, my grandfather always says, keep a good card trick under your hat. I'll lift the hat up. I'll hold the hat as the spectator picks up the big folded up card. By the way, that card is Jay Sankey's The Bigger Finish. That's, that's the card that I use. So, spectator picks it up and then I'll say, so thank you, grandfather. And he said this trick meant me a lot of money, so if you guys liked it, throw some money in the hat. You want to also have some very funny one-liners for the end of the show. So at the end of your street magic show, you want to make sure you have some stock lines, as they call it. A couple of them I like to use are at the end of the show, I say, if you like the show, throw um, a, a couple bucks in the hat. If you didn't like the show, my name is David Copperfield, throw a 20 in anyways, if you didn't like the show. Uh, another stock line some magicians use is take your wallet out, throw, take a couple bucks out and throw your wallet in the hat, you'll get everything back to you in a couple days. Um, uh, some of them say, hey, if you don't have any money on you, I totally understand. I've been there before. There's an ATM right down the street, though. If you want to take some money out, I'll be waiting. Come back and give me the money. 
Um, so that's a couple stock lines that I've used before and some other magicians use as well. But you just want to make sure you reference the hat throughout the entire show. At the end of the show, have some way to have the hat in your hand. So finish with a trick that lets that lets you have the hat in your hand and then reference the hat throughout the show. Oh, and I just thought of another one too. Another good stock line that I've seen a magician use is this is a magic hat. Every time I ask for money, people disappear. That's a good one too. It gets a laugh and then, you know, normally. So um, sometimes also... Some magicians don't like holding the hat at the end of the show, and some people don't pass the hat. See, the best thing is you can uh, take the hat, and you can say, uh, I'm going to pass this hat around at the end of the show. Um, or at the end of the show, you say, I'm going to pass this hat around, throw some money in if you like the show. If you didn't, still throw money in anyways. Sometimes some magicians will say, you know, if you like the show, I'm going to leave the hat right here on the ground. You throw some money in if you like. And because some people don't like when the magician holds the hat or when they pass it around. People don't want to throw money in. If you leave it on the ground, those people are too shy to come up and actually put money in the hat. So if you leave it on the ground, people will throw money in. So, yeah, that's just kind of some ways to pitch for tips. There's other stock lines. If you, if you Google uh, pitching for tips stock lines, I found some websites that have a bunch of pages, um, a bunch of different stock lines. So go check that out. Uh, I'm not going to give you the websites. One, because I don't remember what they are. Two, you can Google that. But just Google uh, Pitch for Tips stock lines, and you can find some really good ones. All right. So now our final question comes from Jay Brothwick. Wait a minute. Jay Brothwick didn't submit a question this week. Ah, we missed you this week on Magician 101, Jay. Hope we see you back next week. All right, that's going to do it this week for Magician 101. Uh, I want to thank everybody who submitted questions. Make sure to watch the new show, Trick Questions, premiering tomorrow. And I'll see you next Wednesday for an all-new Magician 101. Leave your questions down below for next week. I pour it right inside of here and notice that the milk, of course you get the, the two tubes and you get a certain amount of bottles. Let me grab one of the bottles. A series on my channel where every single Friday I'll be uploading a brand new video in which I'll teach you how to do an easy magic trick.